According to John Adams, the American Revolution began long before the War for Independence actually started. The real American Revolution was in the minds of the people and occurred before a drop of blood was shed. So when did it begin? Victory over France in the Seven Years' War left England in charge of an enormous, sprawling empire. Great Britain had a huge debt as a consequence of that Seven Years' War. Uh, so the British Parliament had a real need to find a way to raise additional revenues to pay for the cost of this exciting new territory in North America. So Parliament passed the Sugar and Currency Acts in 1764, but without the colonists' consent. If a government can tax you, then that government can take away your property, your wealth. So any government that overstepped its boundaries in terms of taxation was attacking your fundamental right to hold property. Did Parliament have the right to pass laws to which the colonies had not consented? When Parliament passed the Stamp Act of 1765, the colonists responded with a resounding no. The stamp tax was a wide-ranging uh, tax on all manner of economic life in America. No taxation without representation blared newspapers up and down the colonies. A Stamp Act Congress met in New York and sent respectful protests to the king. The British called this a dangerous tendency. But an even more dangerous tendency was stirring up in Boston. On the night of August 14th, a furious mob tore through the house of Stamp Master Andrew Oliver. During the next 12 days, Stamp Act riots took over Boston. Several thousand uh, Bostonians, common people, marching down the streets in full cry and heading for the stamp distributor's house. And you would have seen that house come flying apart brick by brick, timber by timber. The pictures would have been torn off the wall. Feather pillows would have been ripped open. And of course, the lieutenant governor and the stamp distributor were fleeing for their lives with their family in their nightshirts. Resistance to the Stamp Act spread throughout the colonies as newspapers told the stories of ordinary people standing up for their rights. Led by groups called the Sons of Liberty, protesters terrified British officials into resigning their jobs. Parliament hadn't expected such angry resistance. In March of 1766, it repealed the Stamp Act. All over America, colonists went wild with joy, clanging bells and lighting bonfires. Colonial mob activities like the Stamp Act riots taught people who had never been involved in politics the power of group action in resisting authority.